I've had a lot of people ask me how I color grade my GX85 footage. So today, I'm gonna to take you through Premiere Pro and take you into the Lumetri color panel and show you how I go about color grading my footage out of the GX85. So we have Premiere opened up. I'm gonna just start a new project for the sake of this video. We're gonna create a new sequence, 3840 by 2160. Uh, I like working on 4K timelines with all of my footage now uh, to bypass YouTube compression since a lot of the uh, work I'm uploading is going straight to YouTube. Even if it's uh, shot with some 1080 cameras, I like to upload in 4K to bypass uh, YouTube's heavy compression on 1080p files. Right off the bat, you can tell that the GX85 footage looks great. This is all shot in natural, negative five on everything besides saturation. I keep saturation at negative three, like I previously discussed in my last video. Many people think that you should create your own looks when creating your video. And I think that's a great idea, but I also think it's a great idea to use LUTs. I don't know why people think that it's a sin because I think it's a beautiful way to get your footage to a good starting place and tweak from there. Let's use this shot. Uh, we have skin tone for reference. I think this will be a good shot since we have a skin tone uh, in the frame and it'll be a good reference to see how the colors react to skin. First of all, we're gonna balance this image. In Premiere's Lumetri color panel, I take the white balance picker and I click on a neutral spot. We're gonna click on my wife's white tank top and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And in this case, uh, it seemed to uh, create a little bit warmer of an image and I think it actually looks really good. You could see in my RGB parade that the reds are a bit higher than all the other values. Uh, the skin tone line looks pretty good. It's in a good region and the luma values are looking pretty good as well. Nothing is clipping in whites or the blacks. So what we're gonna do next is I jump right into the creative tab and that is where I drag and drop or drop my LUT. I have a bunch of LUTs here that I use. Uh, I use a lot of LUTs in the impulse pack from Vision Color, which I think is a great pack of LUTs. I've been using them throughout the years and I really enjoy them. They have a lot of film emulation LUTs based off of real film stocks. I've been really enjoying the Fuji Pro LUT. As you can tell, the GX85's 8-bit codec does not handle pushing colors too well. We're at 100% opacity. I never use my LUTs at 100% opacity. So I'm going to drop this down to, let's say, 40. I'm going to toggle on and off this LUT, see what it's doing actually crunching the contrast slightly. If you look into the, the Luma values over here in the waveform, and it's also putting a little bit of green and orange into the whole image. But now we're going to jump into contrast. Being able to rearrange the curve for contrast is really nice. You can really manipulate your image. So I'm going to drag down the shadows just a touch, and I'm going to bring up my mids. My blacks are sitting around, let's say the three, four IRE mark, just to give them some fullness. I push the blacks up just a touch. So the next thing I do is make another point in the curve right in the highlight region and I bring it down. Not too far because you will start messing with skin tone and the highlights will look very unnatural. Added some warmth into the skin and I think it looks really nice. That previous shot that I just color graded was shot on the Lumix 25 1.7 lens. And this shot is shot on my Nikon 24 2.8 AIS adapted via a Viltrox speed booster onto the GX85. So first thing we're gonna do, pick a neutral color that is a little blue. So we're gonna bring that back. I think that looks really good. Now we're going to drop our LUT right off the bat. It actually looks pretty neat but I'm going to drop this to around, let's say 50%. I'm gonna to toggle it on and off, see what it's doing. You can tell the blue is changing in variation in hue, and the whites are turning a little orange. 
and the yellows are becoming more pronounced. Here, we're gonna get to the curves, and you can tell in this area, in the window, it's blowing out. So this is where I'm gonna show you how you can drop down the highlights a little bit to create a, a nicer look where it detracts from the highlights and keeps your eyes focused on what's in what's most important in the frame. I'm gonna drag the shadows down a little bit and I'm going to put the mids up, just give it some life, bring down the highlights, and now I'm going to bring down the whites. Bring the highlights a touch, it creates a, a nicer looking fall off uh, between highlights and mids, and, and we are going to bring down the shadows just a touch more, and we are going to push the blacks up just a bit. I'm gonna toggle everything on and off. It might look a little pink, so we'll bring some more green back into the image. I think that looks really good. This is a wedding I shot two days ago. This is under a tent, a whitish yellow fabric tent, so the skin tone might become a little yellow green. We are going to white balance off of the groom's shirt here. And when I white balanced, it turned the image a little bit green. So we're not gonna do that. We're going to try another selection and see what it does. I think that looks even better. And this time, I'm not even gonna use LUTs. I'm going to just use curves and hue versus sat or the hue saturation curve in the Lumetri panel. Right off the bat, this image is really clean, looks really nice. I think uh, the color looks really nice. I think everything's lying uh, very well. We're gonna drop the shadows down a bit just to add contrast to the image. I think the blacks are already looking pretty dark, so I don't wanna go too crazy. But I'm going to bring up the mids, a nice high key image. I'm gonna take my blacks up, and I didn't mention this before, I bring those up to around the five-ish IRE mark in my, my waveform, bring down the highlights a bit. For this instance, I don't think it's too important to bring them down, but I'm gonna bring the whites down just a bit. And you could actually see over here in this range that I was bringing back information when I pulled down the whites. So as you could see, I'm bringing that down. And what I believe is happening is this range right here on my curve is coming down as well and there's some information in there. What I'm gonna do now is I'm going to take out some of that yellow saturation from the image. So I can pick and, and bring back some of the greens too to create a certain look, real trendy look amongst wedding photographers and uh, some wedding cinematographers. You can also bring down some of this yellow as well. Before and after, I think that looks really good. I can even bring down the shadows just a touch more. And I am pretty happy with this image. I tried to focus in on the couple by subtracting some of the yellow and the green from the image to keep your eyes focused on them. So I'm gonna show you what I did to this footage to get it where it looks as of this moment. I'll show you my base correction. Let me toggle this on and off. Right off the bat, that looks really good. Straight out of the camera, natural, the previous settings that I mentioned, I could have probably gone without even color grading the shot. I wanted some consistency throughout the video, so I used the same LUT and tried to color grade everything a very, uh, in a very similar fashion. For it to look the same, uh, I pumped up the exposure a bit and added a touch of warmth before, after, before, after. My creative tab, I use the Fuji 400 Pro LUT and I use it at 60% opacity. In this situation, I drop the mids a bit to probably bring some of that information back there. And I push the blacks a bit and the highlights are actually raised, probably to give this whole image a little bit more contrast because if I do this, the mountains start fading away again. This will bring the mountains back out. And that is what I did to achieve that look. Very simple, it takes me just a minute to color grade a clip. So I hope what you saw today was a little helpful uh, for color grading on the GX85, maybe even color grading in general on any camera so you can achieve a similar look to some of the looks that I created uh, in some of my videos. And if you have any other questions, please just drop them in the comments below or Instagram message me and I'd love to talk about those things with you. Please, if you haven't, and if you are interested in more GX85 video and GX85 subjects and topics, 
please subscribe, like this video, and I hope to see you next time.